Hello there and welcome back to the Master Moldy channel. Now today we're going to be taking a look at five controversial minifigures that have been released recently. I am still stocking up the Bricklink store behind me. Yesterday I pointed somewhere up here. I have no idea where I'm pointing. I'm still getting used to the new unit just on the top there. And so far, so good. The store isn't yet open, but again, there will be a video later this week. Anyway, getting straight on into the minifigures. The reason I picked these five is I've seen quite a bit of discussion around them. These are all confirmed minifigures to be coming out. One of them isn't a confirmed minifigure, but the other four are coming out August 1st, and we'll get into the other one later on in the video. But to start off with, we're going to cut straight to the chase. Ezra Bridger. And the big thing about Ezra's minifigure is actually the eyes on Ezra. The blue eyes I think he has that look like the Sith eyes, but they're sort of anti-Sith eyes. Are they going to do this to all Force users? I'm pretty sure in saying that he's the only minifigure in this whole wave, or probably against Ahsoka, because we are getting a new Ahsoka as well. And we've also got Thrawn. There are a few minifigures in this wave, particularly the new Ahsoka set that have this issue, this difference. I personally do quite like these eyes. It definitely sets them apart from the other Lego minifigures and is a nice style similar to Funko. Funko have the big black beady eyes for all of the characters. Could you see Lego rolling this out for the Star Wars theme? And perhaps that's why some of the minifigures have been less than accurate shall we say we won't be going over that in this video because i've already said enough on that desert skiff we have seen ezra before in rebels in fact i do have the minifigure just behind me here and i think it does look more accurate with the regular eyes he is a humanoid character not particularly human we will Perhaps never know if any of the humanoids are actually human. I know Star Wars does list most of them as humans, but I don't think that's exactly anything that's been confirmed. I'm trying to think if a droid has like scanned them and classified them as actually human, or if it's just the dictionary is calling them humanoid. I best put Ezra back before I forget where he come from. Well, Lafau, obviously. But it's an interesting take, these eyes. Recently, we've seen the Brickheads get a ring around the outside of their eyes. And I think that, too, is a very interesting take because it adds that extra little bit of detail, like eye colour, that many people, to be honest, probably won't be fussed about. But that is a change from the regular Brickheads' eyes. And if you do want the eye colours, you're now going to have to part out a few of these sets, mainly just the eye pieces or stock up a few spare pieces from your old new brick heads. Do you keep them different? There are a load of brick heads to be switching up. So let me know down in the comments what your thoughts on the eyes are. And we'll move straight into the next minifigure, Darth Jar Jar. Darth Jar Jar is a fan favourite, that is for sure. So what on earth could be controversial about Darth Jar Jar? Everyone loves him. Well, not quite everyone. A load of people I have seen and it's something I mentioned ages ago, and then I saw Darth Jar Jar and I completely forgot it wasn't a problem anymore. We don't have a new Jar Jar for any of the Phantom Menace sets. In fact, the only Phantom Menace characters we have got have been Qui-Gon, Anakin, and Maul. You could argue we got a few in Brickhead's forms as well. I would love for them to re-release the Queen Amidala figure. I think, honestly... I don't see Lego ever doing that. That figure is worth so much. It goes for about 100, 200 on Brick Owl, Brick Link. I think it starts off at about 200, but they're not great condition. And if you do have one in great condition, people are trying to sell it for free for up to 600, 700 pound for one minifigure that honestly Lego couldn't get rid of two decades ago. So it's crazy to think how much that minifigure is worth, but... I don't see Lego remake it. It's one of them characters that they've done out of the way, much like Revan. I don't see Lego coming out with another Revan minifigure, but where's Jar Jar? We needed a Jar Jar. Now, the last Sith Infiltrator did actually come with Watto as well as Anakin, Qui-Gon and Maul. So it would have been nice to have got an extra figure. Jar Jar perhaps wouldn't have fit in as well with the set. Perhaps it would have been a, another excuse for them to whack Palpatine, so they decided it'd be better if they didn't give that fourth minifigure. You know, balance out the set. You got Qui-Gon, you got Maul, you got Anakin, 
and it would have been a great chance to get a Nemoidian figure. We haven't got one of them since the Clone Wars sets like 10 plus years ago. I'd love to get my hands on a Nemoidian, but it is a little surprising we haven't seen a Jar Jar. Is there anything in the works for later this year for Phantom Menace? I really don't think so. August has come and will soon have gone. Perhaps you're watching this past August and it's already gone, in which case, let me know if you're picking up any sets. We've still got a celebration exclusive set as well, which is rumored to come with the final droid. We've now seen images. If you're over on the channel Discord, you will have seen images. It's QTKT, really disappointing. It is honestly a waste of that extra minifigure. R2KT would have been a great minifigure to have, especially for a convention exclusive. It's one that not many people would want to go out and buy, but as it's an exclusive and it has such a meaning to Star Wars fans, not just Lego Star Wars fans. I mean, they've popped up in the Star Wars games, but I don't think diehard Lego fans are going to be interested in a droid that is purely just Star Wars fan backstory. So it's definitely smart what Lego have done, bringing in some fans outside of the Lego group, outside of us who really just love the Lego bricks. And for the most part, that's why we're here. If you're here because you're a Star Wars fan, you are also welcome to join the channel and take a look at that minifigure early on the Discord. But there are a few other minifigures I feel like we could have got, especially for Phantom Menace. One of them is a fully gold C-3PO, which brings us on to the next minifigure, the exclusive, no longer exclusive to the UCS Land Speeder, which is still on shelves, I believe, the C-3PO with a dual molded leg. Side of the leg printing we've got with the 3PO in Yavin, and I'm pretty sure... No, it wasn't Yavin. It was the Force Awakens poly bag. We got side of the leg print in fully gold. And that's what I've used to make my fully gold prequel C-3PO. The legs off the sequel version, the torso off the new arm printed version, which is the same as this exclusive minifigure. And then the head off really any version you would like. But this C-3PO comes in a 115-ish pound set. It looks really, really good. It would have been nice to have got a fully gold one, but it does go better with R2-D2. I did see David from Solid Brick Studios playing with it like it was in the Geonosis scene. He had one of the old B1 battle droids. That was hilarious. I would have loved to have been playing around with them like that. I think the three of them together, it's making me want to part out that old B1, but that's expensive enough, let alone buying these two new sets that cost like nearly 200 pound. It's something my bank can't afford right now, but before they retire, I am going to try to get my hands on them because they would look awesome in the background. But I also just really want to play with these display models. 18 plus sets, and you know a lot of the prequel fans are going to be playing around with these fan of favorite characters. But the minifigure with the set, the C-3PO, is causing a little bit of uproar. Now, there is a point where you've got to look at it and go, did LEGO ever say these were going to be exclusive? Obviously, they don't say they're going to be exclusive forever, but a lot of the times on these sets, they do say, and coming with an exclusive C-3PO, because at the time, it is exclusive. It'd be interesting to see anywhere if they do say that, if they update it before the set is announced, to say it's no longer exclusive, because I doubt they'll have exclusive 3PO on a UCS set, that it's no longer exclusive to. I mean, from a legal standpoint, I'm pretty sure they can't do that. Otherwise, it's some sort of false advertising and we're not going to get into that. But we've seen this before. Rex was with the UCS Venator and people were saying Rex is going to come back. Yularen was on the box. Out of the two, Rex is going to be the most popular character. So why did Lego whack Yularen on the box? Well, taking a look back at the old UCS sets, C-3PO, the exclusive for the land speeder, on the box. The pilot for the tire interceptor on the box. There's a chance we could see that exact same mouse droid build in a future set, which honestly, Paz versus Gideon, they probably should have included a mouse droid because now everyone's just pying it out a bit like I did with Servo, who you would have seen at the start of the video when I started talking about minifigures. And this from the new Jedi Bob shuttle. I haven't picked it up early, but all common pieces, you can just pie it out, and I'm sure the mouse droid is the same. So perhaps we need to do a mouse droid video sometime soon. Them collection videos are going down so well, and I'm so happy they are, because I really like building armies of funny characters, and I've got a clone one in the works for the near future. Honestly, stay tuned, you're all going to love it. And 
It also helps me build up my clone army as well. There's a few of those in the near future. I'm so excited to be sharing them with you. But we've also got Luke from the X-Wing who has a key ring that you can pull the arms and legs apart off of. You can sort of dismantle the key ring. And now I have a UCS Luke in my collection and hopefully soon I've got the UCS 3PO. I've got a UCS Rex and I am looking at buying some custom printed arms. Perhaps I'll fire star toys, which you'll know I really do love over here on the channel to put on my TIE pilots and make them look like the UCS versions. So if Firestar are able to give us arms for like three quid to improve our figures and take them to the next level, the rest of the minifigures don't look that unique. So it makes sense that LEGO are trying to get a few of these out cheaper because the people that really want the figure and not the build, besides the resellers, which I think LEGO are definitely teaching a lesson to with that wreck. So it sort of serves them, right? I don't know why you would spend hundreds of pounds trying to sell a minifigure, similar to the Captain Rex Black Series minifigure, if you're a fan of that. They're now re-releasing Rex, so all them 500, 600 Black Series figures, yeah, they're probably gonna keep their value, but anyone that just wants a Phase 2 Rex is gonna buy the new one and not bother with the resellers. I do feel sorry a bit for collectors who want an old minifigure. I've been looking at the gonks. The cheapest I can get these gonks is a couple hundred quid for an old gonk minifigure. A lot of the used ones do have scratches which lower the price, which at the end of the day, I'm just gonna go for a used one. It's gonna sit on my shelf. A few scratches really doesn't put me off. But collectors that want mint condition items are really having to shell out for it. And I guess that's what keeps collectors in business because at the end of the day, at one point, they're just going to sell their collection to someone else and pass it around. Or who knows, perhaps one day we'll have a Lego museum where we can donate all of our rare antiques. But back in the day, I've already mentioned this about Boba, was exclusive to the Slave One and then they put him in the Cloud City. We've got a better Boba today from Empire Strikes Back and it came in a mech. So Lego are really trying to drum out these really cool characters in cheap sets and I am all here for it. There are some really expensive minifigures that people are getting knockoffs because they only cost a couple of quid, three pound, five pound, a tenner, compared to even some of the more high price customs, which you'll hear a lot about GCC, CAC, because they start off at about 30, 40 pound, and some of their customs, once they're out of stock and they've stopped production, can go for hundreds of pounds on eBay and other sites like that. So there's definitely a market for the rarer figures, but I like the fact that Lego are giving us Boba Fett, they're giving us Captain Rex, and they're also giving us characters like the Ahsoka cast. All five of them in a diorama, 50 pound. If it did make it into a diorama, and they added a black face around it, I honestly think I'd be spending that day one for it. But because we've got stickers, they're not printed parts, I am still gonna wait for a sale, but as soon as I pick that up, stay tuned for a video because I'm really excited to review that. I think. That's probably my number one pick from the August wave of sets. But it's not just exclusive minifigures. There are some minifigures that LEGO have the artwork for. And I want to say they've even teased through shows like the Bad Batch. And I'm talking about Commander Wolfie. Everyone's waiting for the Bad Batch Season 3 set. No rumours whatsoever yet. We got one for Season 1. We got one for Season 2. We got a set for Andor Season 1. We're getting a set for Skeleton Crew. What about... Acolyte Kenobi got a handful of sets to be fair, but we all know they didn't do too well So I can see why Lego is sticking to one set per but what about Bad Batch season 3? What about Acolyte? I really do want them to release an Acolyte set and this week I am working on a custom Acolyte display for all the custom minifigures I'm looking at creating stay tuned once you've watched the finale or perhaps if you're waiting to watch the finale this Wednesday check out the video that's coming out midday UK time because I'm gonna try and make as many characters as I can, and I'm really excited to see how that Jedi Temple build turns out. Because that's only in two days time, which means I'm gonna to have to record it tomorrow. So you know what I'll be doing after this video as well as stocking the Bricklink store, but we still haven't got Wolfie. We've got an image of a phase two Wolfie. I don't know if he showed up in the Skywalker saga. I don't think he did because he only shows up in Clone Wars and I think they went with a few other better liked characters like Rex. No offense to any of the Wolfpack fans out there. I know Wolf is also a very popular minifigure, but they've got a design for him. They just need to 
squeeze him into a set, which we got the perfect opportunity with Bad Batch to get a row class shuttle, the same one that Palpatine arrives in. And I know I wanted that to be the one from the advent. I think I blinded myself with the need to get a Wolfie because people are pointing out it's actually the same one that Palpatine arrives in because Wolfs does have that troop carrier at the bottom. Now, in micro form, it would have been hard to get that troop carrier at the bottom. So I'm still holding hope. It looks like a rogue class shuttle. It could be the one from Revenge of the Sith that Palpatine arrives in. So thank you all for your comments on that video. We get so many minifigures from LEGO. And everywhere you look on my display, there are more and more Lego Star Wars minifigures, but there's still a handful of them that I think we really should have got updated. I mean, Wolf's got a phase one. We don't even have a phase two clone trooper for Wolf at all. Someone like Rex we had ages ago, and Cody and Rex have also got phase ones, but some of these minifigures don't even exist unless you're going with custom resellers, which if they were cheap enough, perhaps that's fair, but Lego can turn around, look at these and go, well, they're charging 30, 40 pound for a minifigure. Let's whack them in a 30, 40 pound set with two or three other minifigures. And they know that everyone's gonna swoop them up, even if you've already bought the custom. Now, last but not least, we're on to Jedi Bob. Well, what can people not like about Jedi Bob? There's really not much to not like about the minifigure, if I'm honest, besides the set that they come in, reusing the clone torso and legs, they got to give us a unique something, perhaps an arm print with a sign. Perhaps they could have given us the Camino medical patch on the arm. There was so much they could have done, and that would have been for a custom 501st clone. You all know the one from the Umbar arc that I'd really like to get in Lego. But the beard is actually being questioned by quite a few people. I like the Benny style printing, but the people that are questioning it are not liking it. They're actually saying it's not Benny enough because there's a bit of a scraggle on one side of the beard and I think the top of the torso print is faded and there's a few lines in the printing but it's not as faded as people might have liked now with Benny he had the helmet with the crack and the faded space logo I think they definitely could have done a bit more fading on the torso perhaps the bottom right just like completely got rid of it where the thumb smudged it over time or something like that and the old capes used to tear so easily. I wouldn't like to see a torn cape, but I definitely think they could have torn the cape to fit a Jedi Bob style, especially in universe rebuild the galaxy. Perhaps it got cut short or there's another reason for it. And as for the head, I think a faded beard might have looked a bit better than the jaggedy edge. It just looks a bit too clean to be an older Lego minifigure. I mean, I have a Lobot, which I don't know if they are on my display because the front of the face is completely worn down. A bit like some of the older Lego minifigures you'll see on sale on Bricklink, Brick Owl, and the other third party sites where they've not even necessarily been played with so much because one of my Lobots used to just stand on my display, but it was just the printing on the face. The backside is completely fine. The front is just pretty much non-existent. So there's definitely a bit more fading and other things that they could have done to this figure. But I think the big problem people are actually having with this minifigure is the set that he comes in. 40 pound for a 30 pound set, no anniversary minifigure, a gonk that's made of very common parts because I was able to build it myself and a trooper that's just got the head switched out for Admiral Act. But it's a new head. So we've got to give them that for the Akbar Trooper. But we not only got the Trooper in a 15, 20 pound battle pack, which is the prices it's going for on Amazon and that. If you haven't seen my community post, check it out. There's a link to, I think it was 25% off at the time. It went up to 35% and he's back at 25% as I'm recording this video. But Prime Day deals are coming up. So keep an eye on that community tab for any better deals for specifically that battle pack and if there's any really good deals you might even see a haul from yours truly but i do like the new akbar head i can't really insult it too much that gonk is a little disappointing that feels like a fourth minifigure because it's just common parts i like the fact they're recognizing it as a minifigure because they are minifigures but no phantom menace jar jar we also had ezra beforehand with the new eyes 
Do you like the new eyes? Are you not a fan of the new eyes? Then the exclusive minifigures. Perhaps I would be better doing polls on this, but this would just take so long to set up the five different polls. And it's much easier to hear your thoughts down in the comments. We also had Wolfie. Are you expecting more clones? Or as we get further from Clone Wars, do you think Rex and Yularen are made just to keep us Clone Wars fans happy and we'll be getting more regular clones in battle packs? And finally, Jedi Bob. How do you feel about the worn printing and the set in general? Let me know down in the comments. Be sure to smash a like and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. But that is all for today. Check out all the videos on screen now. And may the bricks be with you always.